In this video, I will share with you the exact process I use to write content that generates dollars. I've been on LinkedIn for quite some time. I've helped people grow on LinkedIn. And to be honest, it's been amazing how much money we managed to generate. Literally for our different software, it counts in millions of dollars in revenue. This is a profile I actually had since last year. Essentially in a year, I grew by more than 40,000 followers. If you check actually on Taplio, the stats from July 12 to April 8, so around like today, I've added essentially like 42,000 followers. So in this video, I really want to show you exactly how I've built my LinkedIn profile. How do I write content that gets engagement? And most importantly, how do I write content that generates dollars, signups and sales for my company? Obviously, like finding customers on social media, it's really hard and at the same time, really easy right now because everyone is online, but there are also like a lot of competition because we are in an attention war. And between, you know, like your business and super cute puppies that you can see on Instagram, TikTok, etc., who's going to win? Probably like uh, the cute puppies. And that's why, in my opinion, if you are growing a B2B business, the only place where you should focus is LinkedIn because on LinkedIn, you have like 65 million decision makers. Obviously, like you're in B2B and your target are like butchers or bakers or whatever. LinkedIn will be like useless. But if you're in the digital space, if you are like targeting anyone who's on LinkedIn, then that's the place where you should be. So as I was mentioning, I've generated like millions of dollars. I've also helped my team do exactly the same. In this video, I will share all the things that I've taught people. I've helped like tens of people from my team scale their LinkedIn. I think I have like a few examples here, but you can see like some of them have even like more followers than me now. It's really like a game where I've been testing so many things. I really know how it works. And this video is all my process. So I hope it's going to be like really helpful and packed with value for you guys. So why LinkedIn is an awesome platform? It's because in my opinion, it's not saturated with top content creators or like content creators in general, because there are tons of people active on LinkedIn. Let me tell you like a, a little story. I worked like for Procter & Gamble for a while. And the only social media <laughs> that we were allowed on our computer was actually LinkedIn. And that's the same case for any like big corporation. Essentially, like the only social media they allow is LinkedIn, which means that people at work, I can guarantee that lots of people are bored and they're not going to be like uh, going on Instagram or whatever on their computer. They're going to be on LinkedIn because that's the only thing they can access, which means that there are a ton of eyeballs, but very, very, very few people who are creating. And that's for me, like the biggest opportunity for you guys to like stand out. On top of it, this is like the triangle of trust. I've talked about it a lot in my video, but why should you build trust and why LinkedIn is the best place to do it? It. The reason why you should build trust is because with trust, you're going to be able to sell a lot faster. I gave an example. If someone you don't know tries to sell you a product or service, you will most likely put their message in the bin because you don't know them. But if it were Bill Gates himself or Elon Musk reaching out to you and asking to check his new product, you would be interested. Trust is built actually on three pillars, emotional connection, credibility, and reliability. To make it like super simple, emotional connection, you're watching this video. If you're watching until now, it means like potentially like uh, you connected with the content I write, you like the way I explain things. So we, we created that emotional connection. Reliability is do I deliver on the promise I made? So I've been telling you that this video will help you like generate lots of money and I'm going to show you the entire process. At the end of the video, I can guarantee that you will get ideas and you will know the step by step. So that's like the reliability and the credibility is who am I to talk about it? Well, in that case, I've helped tons of people grow their LinkedIn profile. My LinkedIn profile is more than 4,000 followers. I think I reached in just like last week, 400,000 people. If I just jump to like posting impression. In 90 days, I reached more than 4 million people. That's quite huge when you think of it. And just with content, and I don't spend any money creating content, I'm going to show you exactly like how I find my ideas, how to write compelling content, etc, etc. Basically, why trust is important. When I started with Outbound, I would receive like this kind of messages. So F Mm -mm, mother French mother mm -mm, you got it and now obviously with the personal brand when I reach out to people I receive a lot of more positive replies oh once again you don't have to pause the video take notes etc because I will share with you the entire like notion I'm going through that way you have my notes and you have everything so typically like here I received the message from an investor or someone we want to invest in my company but it's the same as cold email so what do I do whenever I receive this kind of message first thing is I go on LinkedIn and I basically check whether or not the people are legit if you did not watch my video on how to optimize like uh, your LinkedIn profile, please do. I created like a whole video to show you exactly how you can create a LinkedIn profile. Same, it's free and you can have like the step by step. And as I was mentioning, like more
more than 4 million views. And also with my team, we reached more than 10 million people. So what are the key things to grow fast on LinkedIn? One is understanding your potential customer. Two is understanding the anatomy of a viral LinkedIn post. And three, having a consistent posting routine. Personally, super hard to be consistent, but I will show you like how I managed to do it. So the main topic is the foundation of your content strategy. If your topic is not clear enough and relevant to your potential customers, then everything else will fall apart. Because whenever like people want to follow you for a reason, they want to keep seeing more or less the same type of content. And that's how you build massive audience. Eventually, it might be like a bit boring for you to always post about the same thing. But to be honest, it's the key to success. The biggest content creator out there are just recycling the best of their content. And we will also see like how to do so. So the main goal is for you to understand the pain point of your customers. Again, I created a video on how to build a product everyone wants. It goes through like how to interview people, how to understand their pain, etc., etc. So I've put the link here. And if you haven't watched it, you should. The first thing I want to tackle is like the biggest misconception is people believe that to write content, you need to be an expert. In reality, you don't need to be an expert, but you must be interested in your niche enough to be willing to constantly learn about it and share your learnings in public. There's a quote that says, if you want to learn something, you need to teach it. And to be honest, for me, like writing is exactly the same as teaching to crystallize your knowledge, the more you write about it, the clearer it will be in your mind. So writing is an awesome thing to level up faster. And at the same time, it generates revenue your way. It opens like tons of opportunities because obviously when you have a big audience, a big following, a lot of people want to message you, do stuff with you. If you knew like the amount of people would chat to me just based on my content, and I'm talking like high level CEOs, billionaires, etc., etc., it's, it's just insane. Investing in yourself is something you will never regret. Let's take an example. If you offer copywriting services to B2B founders, copywriting will be your main theme. And you can write tips for founders on building their personal brand with good copy, for example. And if you have a sales automation, tool, guess what? You can write about sales automation and post about best practices about sales prospecting. That's how I started my company. I was only posting about it. Now, obviously, I have like many more tools that I run many more companies. So my goal is to be a bit more high level. I talk more about entrepreneurship, growing a company, hence this video. Typically, let's say that you've identified your niche now. How exactly do you find content? Auguste Renoir once said, the only way to understand painting is to go and look at it. So if you want to get good at painting, you should go to museum, start looking at how people paint and then and try to reproduce. What does that mean in the content world? You need to find kind of like your mentor, your inspiration. You need to find the people who are actually writing like really good content. For that, LinkedIn search is really like a mess. I really don't know how such a big company can have such a poor search. So here on Taplio, you can basically go to like the search mode and here you can type pretty much anything you want. So if your topic is like cold email, then you will have all the posts about cold email that are actually performing. And you can even decide like to filters and say like minimum of 40 likes, but you can put even more published like at least 30 days ago, et cetera, et cetera. And here, obviously, you want to remove like a, a few stuff. So this for me is literally like the best way. So if I type, for example, I don't know, entrepreneurship, then it's going to search for all the posts related to entrepreneurship and give me the best of the best. Now from here, actually, like you have a lot of inspiration and you see like whether or not it's working. So typically, if you resonate with one post, you can edit and post something. So here, for example, the hook was entrepreneurship can be lovely, but it doesn't need to be. Here are three things every entrepreneur can do to have more fun and support on the journey. And then you could start having something. So for example, you could say entrepreneurship is the most lonely road you can take, but it doesn't have to be that way. And then you can say, here are like five things I do as an entrepreneur to enjoy the journey more. And then just like that, I have a hook that works quite well because the post like uh, worked pretty well. And then I can just add five bullet points, create a network of like-minded individual, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can write your post and then you can go through like pretty much like every post that you see. And by doing this, you will start getting ideas and then you just have to click on add to queue. And this is how you actually become consistent because for me, content, I've never managed to really like be super consistent. I try to write every day. But I have to be honest with you guys, like sometimes I just can't. I have like way too much stuff to do or I find myself excuses. And I know some people are really, really disciplined, really, really great. But to be honest, I'm disciplined, but not like 100%. So some days I won't be able to write and some days I can, I don't know, write maybe like 10, 15, 20 posts. And this is like really helpful. Once you have this and you find like the top content creator, you should install like the Taplio Chrome extension. It's actually free. And then you can go on their profile. So typically if I go on Justin Welsh, he, he talks a lot about like copy writing 
here, thanks to the Taplio Chrome extension, I'm going to be able to actually see all the best posts by Justin Welch. Here I can see like what posts are performing really well in his niche. And from there, it can give me a lot of ideas. And just one thing to be clear, like the way you generate ideas, sometimes you're going to agree with what someone says. So you should rephrase it, make it your own. And sometimes you're just going to disagree totally with what someone says. And you can actually write a post that is contrarian and talk about the very opposite. And by doing so, just like that, you either like steal. The point of stealing is about like making your own. So there is a difference between copying and stealing. When you copy something, it means essentially copy paste. Like you take exactly the same content and you just paste it, which is for me not something you should do. When you steal something, it means that it become yours. And for something to become yours, you need to tweak it. You need to make it your own. You need to rephrase it in your own terms. You need to add like little nuance, etc., etc. And that's how you will become a good content creator. But at first, find your 10 to 20 inspiration, like your mentors, and then eventually down the line, start writing your own content. And on Taplio, every time you add to queue, it will add your post into a queue. And then basically it will get uh, published later. So if you go to my queue, for example, obviously here I haven't scheduled anything because I'm a bit like <laughs> late in content creation because I was working a lot on this YouTube video. But essentially what you can see is that you can have a schedule and then eventually all your posts will be here, which allow you to be like uh, a lot more consistent and you don't have to connect on LinkedIn every single day to post at 11 a.m. So it's like super nice. And then after that, like, what's really cool about Taplio. As I showed you, you have like all your stats here. You see what's working best. What I love is uh, that it shows you also the post that generated the most engagement. And here you have all your posts and also the engagement rates. What's great about this is that you must rewrite your best performing content. And to do so, like sometimes I just go back to my old post and I rewrite them and usually they perform really, really well. And the reason why you should do it is because as you can see, when I started like maybe a year ago, I had like only a few followers and then eventually now I have a lot more. So my post here didn't reach the same people that it will reach here. So rewriting it is actually beneficial for a much larger chunk of the audience and at the same time, it allowed me to save a lot of time while resonating with my audience. So why should I not do it, essentially? Here I was going on someone's profile to basically like share, you know, like the top post. But now you need to also understand when writing the anatomy of like a viral LinkedIn post. As you know, in the past six years, I've built like a $150 million company in public. And I've also analyzed tens of hundreds of viral LinkedIn posts. In my opinion, they have all the same structure. I will break it down in the most simplest way possible. They all have like a strong hook. The body of the post is related. So it can be either like a personal story, like something that uh, is being teach or something like that. And finally, there's a conclusion and a CTA. So the hook is the most important because whenever you're on LinkedIn, if I go back to like uh, here, the hook is what will make me or not click on see more. So here, for example, I interviewed a candidate. The team were very excited about her. I think the hook is pretty good. If I had to improve that hook, I would have said like I interviewed a candidate. I was expecting something great and eventually something happened. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> now I would definitely want to click on see more and go and look at like the whole post. So the idea of the hook, you got it, is to hook people and eventually make them click on see more. Why uh, do you need people to click on see more? The way the LinkedIn algorithm works is that they want people to spend as much time on the platform. Why? Because they are making shit tons of money the more you stay on the platform. Typically, these ads is how LinkedIn make money. And what are they selling to these companies? They are selling eyeballs. Um, and eyeballs mean that if I'm watching and if I'm looking at the ads, they are making more money. So they want you to stay as long as possible on the platform so they can make as much as money as possible. So when a post is good and people click on see more, LinkedIn wants to reward the content creator and will give them more views and push their post a lot more. That's why your hook is actually so important. So how do you write a great hook? You can go to Taplio again, to be honest, it's it's pretty cool for that. And here you have like the hook generator. So for example, tell us what your post is about and we'll generate an eye-catching hook for it. Five things to do as a lonely entrepreneur. Not sure why I chose that topic. <laughs> Everything is uh, used with uh, ChatGPT, so it's like the best LLM at the moment. We use like uh, different combos also, but eventually it's going to generate hooks. Some of them, to be honest, are good. Some of them are not that great, but at least it gives you like uh, an idea. Loneliness at the top is not just you. I think this is pretty good. 
to be honest, or like every stared into the abyss of entrepreneurship alone. It's a journey of you dare to narrate. Let me guide you. I think the tone is maybe like a bit like too formal for me, but at least it gives me like ideas on how to basically shape my hook. So here, for example, I like the loneliness at the top. It's not just you. And then let me guide you is pretty cool because if you have felt lonely, you are hooking the person. If you're an entrepreneur, I mean, you know that it can get lonely. So having like this emotional connection from the start on the hook is pretty powerful. And again, you can do this on pretty much like any topic and you can just generate as many as you want to just get you like uh, more and more creative. Then comes like uh, the body of your post once you have like a good hook. So this is a post I wrote and the topic is about fundraising. So you can see lots of people advise you to do like very short posts, very sharp, like no fluff, etc. It's not true. If your content is good, people are going to read it. I mean, you see like it's just one post. It's a story I'm telling and it got almost 200,000 views. You know how much money I'd pay like to get 200,000 views just for ads or even like a newsletter. Like this post is basically tens of thousands of dollars in revenue. So here the idea is to tell like a very good story. And then the second thing you want to do is have more spaces because you want people to be able to read it on their phone and really get as much value from it. Again, telling a story, making it relatable is like super important. I share personal and very specific example. I use the pronoun also you talking directly to the reader and the sentences are also sharp and concise, like no fluff. I try to remove as much filler word as I can. Again, if you want to use Taplio, there is also like post generator. I think it's really good to use this. So in Taplio, if you go like uh, here, you have like post generator and it works exactly the same as uh, basically the hook generator and it will write entirely your post. The way I use it personally is just to give me like tons of ideas and then I kind of like rewrite everything. But overall, it's very easy and this is the best way not to start on a blank page, which in my opinion is the toughest thing. Staring at a blank screen and writing something is really hard. However, when you have a post and you need to rewrite it, it's actually like a lot easier and a lot faster to do it. Then the call to action you want obviously people to take action whether it's commenting on your post whether it's uh, going on a link whether it's DMing you and overall like there are lots of different ways to do so but the call to action uh, in my opinion should be like as sharp as possible you can put link on post but the reach will decrease as I mentioned LinkedIn wants people to stay on the platform so when there's a link obviously they don't want to show it a lot but in some cases like whenever I want to drive like some people to YouTube videos I will post it here and some people like will click which drives like for me high quality traffic to a video and eventually like convert a lot more. I gave you like a few examples here, but something like uh, I can also show you. So I think this is like a really good example. It's a post that reached like more than 100,000 people and it's money maker. Here we had created a whole like uh, template collection. If you do sales prospecting, we have lots of templates from real people with their actual like stats. So people can actually steal what has been working for others. And it's an open page. But to drive traffic to that page, what I told is that I had created like a secret resource. And if people wanted access access, they had to comment. Here I edited the post because I was receiving way too many comments. But the goal, you know, it's like I asked people to ask for the link and then I would reply with the actual link. And that generated tens of thousands of visitors to the website. And in MRR, so like monthly recurring revenue for us, it's like $20,000, $30,000 in monthly recurring revenue with just a post. So at a yearly level, you just multiply that number by 12 because it's a monthly subscription. And you see that one post can actually generate, I don't know, like $400,000, which is insane. The comment and get approach, it's basically like comment something and then you're going to have it. It's just insane. The way I do it, first I ask people, so here the initial post was, if you want to get access, just comment link. And now I've switched it and edited it after some times and put the link directly because the reach was so huge and there were so many comments that I just wanted people to click on the link and that's it. So it's a great way to prime your post, get tons of comments, and then you make the edit, the switch. That way people will click on the link while the post keep getting a lot of reach. It's a little hack, but that works like extremely well and an easy way again to generate like revenue. And we do that like with all our sales. Sal does it a lot. We have like sales rep who do it where basically like people are essentially like just reaching out via DM to asking for demos, etc, etc. Consistent posting routine, I talked about it earlier, which is basically you have to schedule your post, otherwise you're going to forget because to be honest, it's impossible to be every single day at 11 a.m. like uh, in front of your computer to post. If you're like in deep work doing something else, you should focus on that and not interrupt your day just because you need to post on social media. So not scheduling is like the biggest mistake you can do. So I usually try to have like uh, one or two weeks in advance. It took me two weeks to create all these videos. So now like I need to go back and start posting again, but literally like uh, the best way. Something I haven't shown, but it's really cool. It's the engage part here. Uh, you can essentially like find the best post from 
everyone on a certain topic. So let's say like uh, your target are entrepreneurs. What you could have is all the people who write about entrepreneurship here, and then you could write like your comment and engage directly with their post. That way it allows you to save so much time and you don't have to be just scrolling on a feed trying to look for people talking about entrepreneurship. You can narrow down your targeting and by doing so, because whenever you post something, people see who you are and what you do. Eventually, like you just steal people's audience by commenting on their post. And I also talked about it in a previous video. All right. I hope like uh, that was helpful. My entire team used Aplio to boost their like profile. For me, this is like a game changer uh, just because I find the right ideas. I can schedule my content. I can like write the best content and get like inspiration and help with AI. And that's pretty much it. That's how, you know, like you grow your audience and that's exactly the process I use. So I hope it was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have questions and you will be able to find the link to that Notion doc with all the info and example. Peace.